Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Got traffic? Five SEO strategies to drive monster results. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealeron. And for anyone who isn't familiar with Dealeron, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, and we're best known for our SEO, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. And I'm very proud to announce that Dealeron was the big winner once again at the Digital Dealer 16 Website Excellence Awards. We snagged top honors for highest conversion, highest LTV, lowest bounce rate, and for an amazing sixth time in a row, overall winner. No other website company can even come close. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. So, does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads? Well, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Sean Szymanski as our presenter today. Sean Szymanski is the CEO and founder of Customer Scout, Inc., which provides internet marketing services such as on-site and off-site SEO content strategies, press release content strategies, creation, blog creation and management, and much more for franchise automotive dealerships. Sean proudly proclaims that the success of Customer Scout is in direct proportion to the success of his dealership clients. And Sean's unwavering commitment to customer satisfaction it must be working because Customer Scout has never lost a dealer client. He has over 10 years experience in the automotive digital marketing space before he started his company over four years ago. Sean can be reached at Sean at CustomerScout.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we'll respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And guess what? Ooh, our good friends at Customer Scout Inc. are giving away two fantastic prizes today on the webinar. First, one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to be winning an HD GoPro Hero 3 digital camera. Oh yeah, it makes it easy to document life's most interesting moments. Wear it, mount it, and love it. This prize is valued at $200. Next, one of you will win an Apple iPad Air 16 gigabyte tablet. It's valued at $500. What? Oh yeah. But you have to be on the live broadcast to win. I wish I was eligible to win one of these awesome prizes today, but you know what? You are. All you have to do is stay tuned for the details after Sean's presentation, and you could be scoring an awesome prize today. <laughs> and at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey, so fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. Today we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. So. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's learn five SEO strategies to drive monster results. Sean, how are you today? Doing great. Just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. This is a really exciting opportunity, and with uh, <clears throat> with the search market and things changing rapidly, um, it's uh, you know it's an honor to to speak to everyone today. Um, Going through a few things today, you know, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, go right into the objectives here. Uh, first one is we're going to be, uh, I call it, rising up to the challenge of our rivals. I actually have the um, sound bit from uh, Rocky, but it, uh, it didn't get that to work quite right. Um, oh, the Eye of the Tiger. Movie. I thought that was a lyric. Yeah, Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger. I love that song. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then we're also going to talk about uh, not brick and mortar, but click and mortar. Your uh, your customers are visiting you online before they visit you at the store, and that's your first chance to make a first impression. So that is going to focus on on-site SEO. And then next, we're going to talk about all things Google. Um, you know, per, you know, not all things. I guess there's many, many products Google offers, but the ones that we'll be focusing on today. Are going to be places plus YouTube and authorship. YouTube is owned by Google, that's why I included it there. Um, words can hurt you, but they can also help you, um, and that is going to focus on Google and other review sites and, and making sure you get those reviews. And then uh, put yourself out there. Uh, 
getting yourself listed on the major and reputable online directories. So uh, before it gets there, though, uh, and then after that, we'll have the question and answer session. Um, but wanted to before I go into the first topic, I just wanted to say a few things. Um, you know, who, who this will benefit? I believe this will benefit. You know, for dealer principals, the strategies will increase your bottom line profitability. General managers, the same thing. Profit profitability as well as help you with success of running your store, hit your co-op dollars, help you hit your new car units sold to get better allocation. General sales managers, um, oh, and I missed some managers there. You see that? I uh, apologize for that. <laughs> You'll reach more in-market new car buyers through more online search visibility in markets you weren't able to tap before. Um, used car sales managers, new car sales create more trade-ins, more people to present used car option to, and you'll have an increased visibility in markets that you didn't before. Uh, internet directors, internet managers, this will help you sell more cars, get more opportunities within the department by appearing in markets you haven't been in previously. Um, BDC managers, this is this strategy is going to help you develop your department to increase your leads to show your success, Pro provide you with more people to call on, um, more people to follow up with, and distribute leads. Um, service directors, um, you know, search, uh, look at all search to a dealer website, half of it or just below half maybe. Um, just depends, I guess. You have to look at your own store to see this, but um, half of the traffic goes to service. So when we're focusing on our on our on-site strategy, um, a lot of the focus has to also be focused not just towards new and sales and use, but also service. Um, so more exposure in markets you haven't touched before will help you increase your service absorption rate for more ROs. Um, so we're going to start with building a, fond a foundation. You know, your competition has increased and raised the bar. Um, years ago, you were competing with other dealership, uh, franchise dealership websites that carry brands that uh, that you carry, and that's who your competition was. You were also competing with a few third-party sites out there. You see AutoTraderCars.com, CarGurus, uh, Kelly Blue Book. I consider these uh, um, for lack, uh, they're definitely your competition. Um, when you're when you're when you're trying to show up for searches, you'll see that they have. Many of these guys have presence in every city and every state across the nation, and they're, you know, they're getting that page one presence. And they're definitely a competitor. Um, this guy, and, you know, this is <laughs> he's a handsome ago, fellow right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure everybody's seen this guy before. I think he's pretty famous. <laughs> he's a good, good use for a presentation. Um, but he represents the buy here, pay here that years ago didn't have websites, and now they do. And so, and many of them have nice websites, and they're doing a good job with SEO. So they're definitely a competitor. And the last one may surprise you; it may not. I feel they're a competitor, but you're OEM. The OEM is looking at what the third-party sites are doing, and they're going to try to emulate them and and gain more of a presence in your market, that so they can then you know take the lead that's the closest to zip code wise to the customer, and then they farm it out to you know that closest dealer and two others. I just feel but they're definitely a competitor of yours because if you could have that search traffic yourself, why not? So it's time to take back what's rightfully yours, your traffic. And so I wanted to go into um, why, how I view a website. <laughs> I view it like it's a college term paper in a sort. Um, you know, and Google is the instructor. So you have your website that equals a college term paper. Um, I'll go into more detail here. Your site map is like the term is is is, is like the term paper table of content. You know, so you know, or you know, organizing your site. Um, that this is how Google sees it. Uh, you look at your site map, it gets crawled engines crawl the site map and and find pages that you want to be indexed. Um, same way you would on a college term paper, you would organize your paper in a in a way that the instructor can know exactly what you're going to talk about what's coming up in the paper and get an idea of what you know what it is that you're going to cover and then we look at the pages of your website are kind of like the body of the paper you know you look at uh, you know how a page is organized all the way up from meta description um, you know title and meta description and then you have the on page content and the in the HTML structure and really and we'll go into this in more detail but then this would be like, you know, and what HTML structure we're talking about here is like your heading text, like this on the on the one to the right here. You see it turn paper; it's a little blurred out, but uh, you have you know heading text and then supportive text below that. That's 
essentially the same way your website works. So we look at the website the way it is now. This is the first step in the strategy is building a solid foundation. Before we can target a direction to go in or a destination, we've got to know where we are right now. Um, and so it's taking a close look at the site and doing some housekeeping of the site. Um, you know, so look at your site and ask yourself these questions. Does it navigate well? Um, to a consumer that's visiting it for the first time, you know, does it let that visitor know everything that you do? Can they go to your website and then uh, go to your store in person and not be surprised by anything? So, like, if you have a body shop, is it, is it mentioned on your, site, uh, on your website? Um, anything special that you do at the store that sets you apart, does your website tell it? Um, does, the, does it uniquely identify you from other dealers that carry your brand? call to action messages of any kind? Is it targeting the geographies you want to market to? And does it echo all of your off-site and, and offline advertising messages? And this includes your, your, what you do is for email blast, it includes your direct mail pieces. But people get those and they immediately go to your website to validate what they've just seen. So essentially, like you do a press release. This is for the truck month. You, know, you do a, a slide share maybe. Here's the truck month. Same same kind of OEM push here. And then you go to the website and it's truck month. So it's a common, common um, everything's in alignment um, from offsite and offline. And then you can validate anything that you have going on in a given month on your website. So let's look at your website the way Google sees it. You know, is each page's metadata unique to that page's content? And as I mentioned before, metadata that I'm referring to is, you know, the title of the page, the description of the page, um, and here's an example. Uh, this is a home page. You know, does it tell the name of the dealership, the locations you're targeting, descriptive content about what's on, going to be on that home page, what the site's about. Does, the page, does, the, does each page have a clear purpose? Um, and I just chose a random page here. This isn't re in regard to like selling cars, but this is Rickenbach Community Investment page. Um, so the whole page is about their community investment. There's nothing um, that's going to confuse you. This whole page is just about that. So like every page you create on your site, um, it's important to make sure that it's you know the, that the, the message is carried throughout that page and it's all about that and the meta description and title speak to that. Um, and then does your content have a strong HTML structure? And here's an example of what I consider strong HTML structure. You have, yeah, I have three highlighted sections here. The first is um, you'll recognize that this is a vehicle details page, first of all. Um, and then in the upper area where you're, in, you know, in you know, years past, this would just be static text. Um, you know, and what, what you can do now is, you know, it's been around for a long time, but just, uh, you know, call, um, call code and your HTML structure to call upon different elements of the vehicle and lift it up into that, that text area. So this is, you know, this changes um, with the vehicle that, it, that is detailed below. So this is a 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, Marcel MX Chevrolet in Lakewood, serving Denver. And another mention, that second highlighted area is just a quick, you know, quick shot of what the vehicle is and what it, what it has. Um, but every page, you know, on the vehicle details page, that would that would change dynamic dynamically with it. Um, do all of your images contain alt text? So if you create a special page um, and you have images on that page, like let's say it was a, a page you created about a for a 2015 Cadillac Escalade, let's say, um, does your does your images on that page also have an alternative text? And what that is, alt tag is an alternative text that tells Google, because Google can't see the image, but they can see the alternative text. Um, and, and also the event that, uh, for whatever reason, the browser doesn't display the image, the consumer that's viewing the page or the user will be able to see that this is um, a 2015 Cadillac Escalade. You can right click on an image and view source um, to see that on your website to check your images. Um, and does your site have any broken pages or links? Um, you know, we're doing housekeeping on the site, figure out where where we are right now. Just coming through the site, searching for broken links, you know, that go to pages that cannot be found. Um, you know, Google sees that, that you know, it's not good for you. 
so it's a good thing to just uh, change the links or remove them. Um, and then uh, moving on, we're going to you know look at you know before you get started in a strategy, it's important to see where you are right now. Also on Google, let's say, um, is a report that I put together. This is what I use to look at a uh, store that I would represent and then compare it to their competitors and find out where we are currently in regard to search presence. Um, you know where where it is where we are page one. Are we page one? Do we own most of the uh, most of the search rank for the keyword we're going after. In this case, it's Denver Cadillac. Um, and, and then who are our competitors and how well are they doing? And then track this on a monthly basis as you create content on your site. And it'll give you, a, it'll give you an idea of how well your strategy is working um, if you're increasing. So do customers, uh, you know, how do customers search for vehicles? I believe there are two uh, purchase funnels that a customer follows um, and maybe maybe you would agree you know they start with the high funnel uh, broad keyword searches these are considered short short tail um, as they begin their search for the vehicle they're, they're going to eventually purchase they end with detailed keyword searches called long tail as they become in market buyers you know according to mos.com um, broad or short tail keyword searches um, so, excuse me, um, short tail keyword searches, example, Chevy cars, um, account for around 20% of search where specific or long tail keyword searches, like uh, for example, 2015 Chevrolet Tahoe in Denver, account for 70%. Here's a graph that you can find on Moe's if you look, um, you know, and just tells you like if we're only focused on your website and you're sure everybody wants to show up, you know, be top search results for broad search terms. Um, but if that's all that we're focusing on, we're going to miss out on the long tail, which account for 70% of search. And um, and so and also by focusing on uh, long tail, you'll you'll it'll it'll give you better presence for the short tail because you're more relevant for long tail stuff and more of it. Um, so getting to the two purchase funnels, this is what I believe um, uh, that your consumer follows before they actually purchase the car. I think they. They, they decide it's time to buy a car, um, so they begin the first funnel there with that decision. Next, they're determining the type of vehicle, car, truck, or SUV. Um, and this is all in their behavior of their search and what they're searching for from broad to specific search terms. The buyer does, uh, determines the brand and model and trim, um, and then they do price point research. And I believe they use you know Kelly Blue Book. I believe they use their other third-party sites, AutoTraderCars.com. I think they look at those sites look around the country and see approximately what their price point should be for the vehicle they're about to purchase. Once they have a good, you know, they know their make, model, trim, and they know the approximate price they want to pay for the vehicle, that's when they fall into the second funnel, which is when they start doing research for the dealerships um, that carry their desired brands. They didn't, uh, you know, they land on your site and they search your inventory. Um, and then they seek reviews after they see that you have vehicles that they would be interested in. Um, they they do reference your reviews of the store to see what others have, you know others experiences have been with you, um, and then you know after that, I believe they they call the dealer, send an email, or they just show up, and then hopefully they they buy that that vehicle. <clears throat> and so maybe some of you don't agree with two purchase funnels. I I just I feel that that's that's how search um, works, and the, like as far as the behaviorally how people. Um, uh, begin the search and, and and people have talked to that aren't car people um, that like aren't car dealership you know that aren't in our world that are looking for a vehicle and asking them questions so it's a small data sample but that's just what I feel so why is organic search so important <clears throat> there are four billion searches done every day that's billion 75 percent of users click on organic search results so it's a huge percentage that are clicking not on paid search but on the organic area, and, that's, and for those of you, and I'm sure everybody does know this, but um, you know the top, you know two, two, three uh, uh, results there are are ads, paid ads, and then down the right hand side, and then some meat and potatoes of the page that's the organic, and that's where most people click. Um, Eight percent of users never go to page two search results. If they can't find what they're looking for on page one, it's easy enough for them just to research or something else um, that will get them 
closer to what they're looking for versus go to page two to see if something showed up. Uh, Forty percent of businesses, this is uh, based, I think this is eMarketer reported this, 40% of businesses said that organic search was their most effective means of advertising. And then SEO, same report, SEO was reported to have the highest lead conversion while being among the lowest cost per lead of all inbound strategies in 2013. So it looks like we have our first poll question. Thank you, Sean. Yes, audience, actually we have two poll questions for you right now. Here is the first one. If you wouldn't mind, please look at your screen and let us know the answer to this question. And the question is, who is currently responsible for coming up with new content for your dealership website? Please select one of the following answers. Is it the internet manager? Is it the general manager? Or do you have somebody in marketing, maybe a marketing manager or somebody in marketing at your dealership who does it? Or maybe you've hired a vendor or a website provider to come up with that new content. Or is it the last option, which is no one? I didn't know we needed to do that. So once we have a majority of those votes, we'll close the poll and share the results. So again, who's currently responsible for coming up with new content for your dealership website? Please select one of those answers, and we will get to your uh, answers very, very shortly. Oh, Renee wrote in, or corporate office has in-house social, option number six. Ah, alas, I can only put five options there, Renee, but thank you so much for that. <laughs> okay, let's see what's going on here. Oh, thank you so much, audience, for getting involved. We really appreciate it. Almost everyone's voted now, so let's close this poll and share the results. Sean, are you ready? I am. All right, let's see what everyone said. Well, about a quarter of today's audience, 26%, said that it's the Internet manager's job to come up with new content for their dealership website. Only 5% said it's the general manager to do that. 62% of today's audience, definitely the majority, said it's a marketing manager or somebody in a marketing position who comes up with new content. 7% said it's a vendor or a website provider. And actually, no one picked the last option. So thank you so much for that. Sean, are those numbers surprising to you, or is that what you were expecting? Oh, no, that, that is what I was expecting. I'm glad nobody answered the last one. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so, um, and, and then, yeah, not surprising. I, you know, I do feel, you know, it's like 26% of me, internet managers, internet managers seem to have a lot on their plate. A lot gets thrown to them to, uh, to, to deliver. Um, it's got to manage leads and, and also, and you know, not just leads that came in today, but the seven-day follow-up, the 13-day, the 60-day, and and so on, and then um, and then also being you know, responsible for uh, creating content that creates a tall order for them, um, and so, but yeah, and then you know, the general manager. There's a lot of general managers I feel that are very involved with the site, their their dealer website, so that doesn't surprise me, but. Um, yeah, and then the marketing manager. So yeah, those are that's what I, I thought I would hear. Yeah, and James also wrote in, and he says that they actually have a part-time employee who comes in and handles new content for the website. So that's interesting too. All right. Yeah, that's excellent. All right, so audience, we're going to follow up with this question. So don't go anywhere. We need your we need to hear your votes on this one as well. So now that we know who takes care of the new content on your website. We want to know how often does your dealership come up with new content, not specials, but how, much, how, how often does your dealership come up with new content for your dealership website? We're not talking about specials though. Please select one of the following. Do you come up with new content every week? You got new stuff to share? Is it every month we make content creation a priority? Every quarter, we realize that we need new content. Is it, eh, twice a year is kind of a lot for us. <laughs> or, um, content creation? I didn't know we had to do that either. So whatever the answer is, we want to know. And the votes are coming in fast, and audience, I do appreciate it. I hope we get as many people voting this time as we had on the last question. So again, how often does your dealership come up with new content for your dealership website. And yes, we're not talking about specials, we're talking about other content. So is it every week, every month, every quarter, biannually, or 
you didn't know you had to do that, so you, you really don't do that. So once we get a majority of the votes, we'll close the poll and we'll share the results. And audience, thank you so much. This really helps us out to find out what's happening in the auto industry by your participation in these questions. And i got to say, Sean, I'm looking at the votes coming in. I think you might be surprised with the answers that we have here. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I hope, hope it's often. Okay, well, let's see. Audience, thank you so much for getting involved. Let's close this poll and share the results. Well, I think it's pretty high, but 39% said that they come up with new content every week. 39%, that's a lot. That's a lot. Of, yeah, I'm really excited about that. 43% said it's every month that they make content crea creation a priority. 43%, that's really high, too. Kudos to my very smart audience. 11% said that they do it every quarter. 7% they said they do it twice a year. And thankfully, no one answered the last. So um, uh, Janelle said, we just created a blog, so content is updated on there at least a few times a week. Thank you so much for that, Janelle. OK, so Sean, what's the right answer? How often? Should dealerships be coming up with new content that are not specials related? Uh, yeah, I, I think you know every week. You know, the the website is the lifeblood of the dealership, in my opinion. So, um, and there's a lot going on at the dealership every single day. And as you know, as the as the dealership meets for the Friday meetings or whatever, and they're putting together the next month. Um, you know, it's I feel that you know in that meeting it it. it if, if, if it's talked about, yeah, here's what we want to accomplish this month on the site, um, and then whoever's building the content or putting it together, you know, is accomplishing that on a weekly basis to to be able to, co to cover the amount of content that's needed or wanted on the site. You know, weekly is is excellent, um, and you know, and then they put together their own strategy in in regard to how they're going to do it and get it up there. But uh, yeah, it, it you know. It's, there's 150,000 moving parts at a dealership, and then you know the website is is where people are visiting at their digital dealership lot. So, um, creating more content for your users, your potential customers to find you on a weekly basis is excellent. And then every month, you know, maybe a lot of the 43% too is probably saying, well, you know, every month we do, and so the, I, I imagine they kind of maybe bleed into the weekly there as well because. They're, you know, they create it every month, and it's probably not just that's not done at the end, the last week of the month. It's probably done throughout the month also. So yeah, th those are great numbers. I'm glad everyone's like really engaged with their website. That's, yeah, I gotta say, I'm really impressed, audience. That is really awesome stuff. Over 80% of today's audience basically do it, you know, every few weeks or so, or every week. So that's amazing numbers. Congratulations and keep it up. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and that you know leads us into you know why the content you're putting up there. You know the the, the guys that are uh, organizing your content uh, and to so say I I always you know and I I believe Google's king and so <laughs> you have and you've heard of Google Panda Penguin and Hummingbird uh, probably, um, but not sure if you knew there's actually 500 updates a year to the Google search algorithm. Um, to keep the information organized properly and keep it uh, relevant, keeping what's on page one and and uh, the, the organization of search results, um, you know, keeping the relevant stuff in front of the customer, the user. And so I have a picture. This is from Bruce Almighty. I thought it's a good analogy or a good illustration of how Google works. I think Google's just a big filing cabinet, <laughs> um, in a, in a sort you have. You know, this could represent a single search. Let's just say, um, you know, all of these files in this file drawer are all trying to get to the very first file um, to be the most relevant uh, for a given search, being page one, being that. So if you look at your search results, you know, you've got one of ten of 250,000 searches uh, or, you know, uh, potential search results. Um, that means all of those sites that are of the 250,000, Google deems them they crawled them in a split second there and, and saw that they have content relevant to that search. But only the ones who end up on page one, as we saw before, um, they, you know, not that many people go to page two. So um, you know, keeping your site fresh with new content can, can help 
make Google's job easier to keep you at the front of the of the of the search results. So um, that's excellent. I'm glad everyone's doing that. Um, you know, so how do you get Google to award you page one placement? Um, you know, and everyone has heard this a lot of times, and, and you're doing it. Sounds like everyone's doing it on a weekly or monthly basis. But creating unique and relevant content on the site. Um, you know, let's take a look at an example. Um, so we've got, you know, the model research landing pages that are provided to you by the OEM. Um, they are, you know, they're there. And when you get your site brand new, it doesn't have content. They provide you these pages with information about your models. But the problem with them is that um, while they're aesthetically pleasing, there's there's uh, there's not very much you can do to differentiate those pages uh, from other dealers that carry your brand nearby you, um, and so you know that creates a the, like a duplicate content in a sense for Google, and it makes their job more difficult because whose model landing page should be more relevant for a search when someone's doing a bank model um, geography search and uh, in, in, in their Google search, and so one way you can can uh, kind of help Google along is by creating your own custom model research landing pages and um, writing your own custom content um, describing the vehicle and optimize it for your target geographies. You know, you, there's websites, you know, like I'm sure everyone's aware of CopyScape Copyright Check. It's a good way after you write your content to go bounce it off of CopyScape to see if anyone else's um, content comes up and gets flagged. You know, so there's, you know, there's people that copy paste and that's no good. Um, Google sees it, duplicate content, and doesn't help that page rank. So you have your own custom content written. Um, Google identifies that as custom content, and it helps you, um, you know, your search ranking improve. Uh, so you give, you know, you give the pages unique metadata. Make sure your content's organized appropriately and it has proper HTML structure. Again, HTML is using that term. Um, and just because I'm not sure if everyone knows that really it's just it's like you know the way you would organize a term paper you know the body of the of a, a particular page in the paper you know, have your your topping your topics you know your heading um, and then those are considered H1s or H6 those are heading text um, but then you have supported text beneath each uh, heading text you have images with all tags you have it structured <coughs> appropriately and you have calls to action to get people deeper into the site. Um, and then, you know, after you create a page, then what I, what we always do is after we create one, we go and we're forthcoming with Google. We, we take the page and we submit that URL to Google.com forward slash add URL um, to help it, you know, to help get it on, you know, hopefully get it uh, indexed quicker. Um, so, you know, as an example, you know, we have a search that I took here. This is a new store um, in uh, Dakota, Colorado. It's uh, about 30 miles or you know, 20, 20, 25 miles outside of Denver. Um, and, you know, consumers looking for a 2014 Infiniti QX80 in Denver. Denver is the highest population density city here in Colorado. I'm using a lot of Colorado stuff. Don't know why I did that. I just started using those searches for this. But any market, you can do this. Um, you know, in the research page, you know, we create um, one and number one organic search result, and then we've got a vehicle details page here with the number two search result. If we clicked on this first one, um, you know, went on this page. Um, so then, you know, all custom created content and imagery um, with calls to actions to get people deeper into the site. Um, you know, Google identified those page, that page as a unique page, <clears throat> and so awarded us the page one search result. Um, as we spoke before, you know, long tail is important. And the more of those you're relevant for, the more broad terms you're going to be relevant for um, through you know creating all this content on your site. Um, you know, so uh, that, you know, and actually I already jumped ahead here into the the third strategy, um, and so I kind of left off the other one. But you know, it's not just you know I'll stop for a moment. It's not just model pages. It's you know, if you have a, you know service department and everything that your service department does, and you know how the service department supports each model that you carry. Um, unique content related to that. Um, you've got a body shop, and you create a page and make it very you know custom content related to that. Like you even take your uh, your your homepage uh, text content and throw that in the copyscape and just make sure that it's unique. You know I've seen. Um, not on dealer on sites, I'll say, but I've seen this on other provider sites that are just out of the box. Obviously, you know they've got 
and that, you know, that you know, everyone gets a website out of the box. There's content already preloaded, um, and that's what it is. It's you know, it's there because it's it's here's the, here's the content, but you, then you know, the important thing is to go differentiate the content, make sure it's unique to you. I've taken actually a, a, another site looked at their on you know homepage content, put it in Copyscape, and it came back with like you know, like 30 dealer search results that carry that same brand with I mean almost like verbatim uh, text content. Uh, so that's not helping them. They need to change up that content and make it you know say who you are, where you are, and what you sell. The same thing that you do on your Google Places, you do on your website. Um, so moving on to the third uh, strategy here is you know. You, to participate in all things Google. Since Google's king, we want to appease the king in order to get them to give us preferential treatment, so to speak. So um, optimizing your Google Places listing is one way you can do that. You know, if you haven't already, managing a, your Places listing, making sure that it um, you know, says who you are, uh, where you are, and, and what you sell. Um, also serving customers where they are and determine a radius. Um, this is something maybe may, you may or may not have already done, but there's a, you know the option there. Um, it's like the, the customers come to this location, or you can select um, we serve customers, and you put in a, in, a, in a radius. And what it helps you do and helps Google understand is that you know this is the this is the marketing radius that you have around the store, and you can, you know put like something relevant. Let's say it's 20 miles, and you'll see how that covers your market, and maybe it covers everything that you want to do, every market that you want to be in, you're telling Google this is this is where we, we serve these people. Um, and you know, and I think, you know, when you look at that question you just you know, you think, well, no, everybody comes to the store. But uh, you know, in the event that somebody needed a car delivered and they're willing to purchase it if it's delivered, I'm sure many of you would, would send somebody to drop off the car. So in that sense you do serve them where they are. Um, uh, then using a local number, and you can you know local call tracking number on your on your places listing. Google likes to see, um, and I've seen. I don't have a reference to this effect, but I've seen it multiple times. Uh, versus using one eight hundred number to track those calls, but it's good to have a tr call tracking number because your places listing is a basically a free website from Google to uh, to award you high search results because they they favor their own websites, obviously. And and you can if, if you do well at optimizing it, you can you can claim that number one spot in the in the Google uh, places listings. Um, upload relevant photos to your dealership service drive, body shop, um, everything you do at the store. You know fill that fill out that places listing to the hilt, um, you know, leaving nothing behind. Um, and then another, this one we're going moving right on to uh, Google Plus. And so I talk a lot, guys. So I'm going to try to condense my words here. I, I sometimes do that. So um, you know, just like you create, you know, get your Google Plus page. Um, you know, this is Google's competing with Facebook. Um, this is their social media um, avenue that they own. You know, and they they I've heard it said that you know you post to Google Plus, and maybe you have content that you've posted on your site and created on your site. Why not post a, a you know kind of a little bit of an announcement on Google Plus? Um, related to the content you just created on your website with a link, you know, and so that's that'd be an example of a good link uh, to your website, and it would help you. Um, Google would see that link, see the content, see the page that it's landing on, and maybe you could get better uh, search uh, ranking from for searches you're going after with that particular page for with that post. Um, work on, <clears throat> you know, just mentioned all this, but you know, completing the about us, uploading videos. Post, you know, a big thing right now. I think dealers are, you know, consumers. As you know, as technology in, in, improves, um, these vehicles can do so many things. Um, and the consumer just, you know, they get the they get the initial when they purchase the vehicle. They get kind of the, the run through. It. Here's all the things that you can do on this car. They drive it home. They go to, you know, they sleep that night. They the next day they're going, man, I forget a lot of the things that this car can do. And so a lot of dealers putting together. Um, their own created how-to videos, um, and this is a good place to put those videos as well as YouTube, which is next. But um, you know, posting videos on how-to and creating a library for your customers to reference is a good idea. Um, and then you commit to posting regularly to Google Plus. You know, make it a part of your content strategy. Um, add relevant uh, plus pages to your circles. 
um, and then ask that they do the same for you. And this could be a body shop that you work with exclusively. It could be you know something in an automotive vertical that you you'd like to um, to link. Um, and then next, we're, you know, look at your managing your YouTube channel the same way you would your website, same way you would your places and plus page. Um, you know, you're building how-to videos. Um, the, the dealership will walk around the dealership, you know, a tour maybe. Um, but and then you know, utilizing the YouTube channel to optimize your your <clears throat> your make and models around the, you know, around your brand. Uh, the videos that you feed to your channel, maybe you have a third party feeding the videos, um, and you can, you know, a lot of them you can go in and, and optimize the actual vehicle video that's being fed to your YouTube channel, um, and then you can include your own text content in there to, you know, talk about the vehicle, your dealership, where you, people, you know, areas you serve, um, include a, a link to your website from each video. Um, target the same geographies with your videos as you do with your website. And as you see, you know, since Google owns YouTube, um, and when you do a search, I think you know, I'd venture to say that you'd agree that most of the videos you find as a result are YouTube videos versus Vimeo, Daily Motion, and um, others. Uh, it's because they own them. Um, so next, you know, Google authorship. This has been around for a long time. But uh, now people with the advancement, you know, with the addition of your plus page, um, you know, with Google creating that, you know, the plus, with Google creating plus, you make Google authorship more important. Um, you know, deal principals can create a Gmail account for themselves, um, add the rel equals author tag to your website, link your website from your plus page to the contributor. You know, you complete the authorship. And then you add authorship, adding authorship makes your website stand out. You know, you see, um, I should have had a screenshot here of one, but you do a search and you have a dealership listing, and then there's the dealer principal's face attached to it. Google reports that there's a higher click through for those um, results just because they're different, mostly. Um, but like, it also makes you look like you get it to the consumer. Um, so uh, we have another poll question, Eliana. Yes, we do, audience. I got a really good poll question for you, and here it is. Please look on your screen and let us know the answer to this question. How often does your sales and service staff ask customers for a Google review? Ooh, that's a good one. Please select one of the following answers. Is it every customer transaction gets asked? It's mandatory in our dealership. Or maybe it's the next answer, which is, most of the time, we do it most of the time, maybe not all the time, but most of the time. Is it eh, 50-50? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Is it uh, seldom, you know, very rarely, once in a while? Or is it we never do because we believe our customers, they get surveyed to death and they think that everyone's asking them for a review. So. Once we get a majority of the votes, we'll close the poll and we'll share the results. Audience, I really need your votes on this one. Thank you so much. Um, and by the way, audience, I want to thank you. We've had some very excellent questions coming in from the audience today, Sean. And audience, you're doing fantastic. Keep those questions coming. And uh, yeah, I think a few of these are going to put Sean on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and get and get a, a very pointed answer from him. So we'll see. We'll see how he does with the question and answer session. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. I know that. Um, Janelle wrote in, we always ask for dealer rater reviews. Should we put more focus on Google reviews? Ooh. Well, I'll tell you what. Before I let Sean address that, let me close this poll and share the results. And audience, you guys rock. Thank you so much for taking part in our poll questions. Well, here's the answers. Okay, 16% of today's audience said that it's mandatory every customer transaction, every customer gets asked for a Google review. 20, yes, that is excellent. 21% said that they do it most of the time. 16% said, eh, it's 50-50. The majority, 37% admit that they do it seldomly. They seldom ask a customer for a Google review. And only 9% said that they never do it because their customers get surveyed enough. So Sean, how often should we be asking our customers for a Google review? And <laughs> should
should we be putting more focus on Google reviews than reviews in other places? Okay, so I'm, I'm with the 16% uh, the they're mandatory every sales and service customer. Um, and I believe, you know, and so here, you know, a bit of the, you know, the so the ease of uh, having people write a dealer, or a dealer rate review or maybe some of these other review sites is that they make it very easy to go ahead and write the review. Google made it more difficult. I think you remember, everyone can remember way back when Google started having Google reviews when they had places uh, first show up, they were including all of the reviews from dealer rater and every other place and giving and they, you know, showing on your places listing on when people, you know, following a search result, say, you know, they had dealers with, you know, like 700 reviews. And so there was like, you know, 300 dealer rater reviews and, and, and admins and all these others. And then you have like three Google reviews <laughs> in that mix. And Google, you know, I think they, what everyone's appetite with, uh, the fact that reviews were showing up and everyone's like, look how well we're rocking out with our reviews. And then Google had, you know, since they own it, the places page, they then everyone saw like, you know, chunks of their reviews disappear. Um, and I, I probably, you know, I venture to say a lot, of, a lot of you experienced that. And that was when, you know, Google was trying to get everyone excited about getting reviews. And then, you know, with the, I believe they had a full intention of, you know, creating their own review um, and, and promoting their own, own review process. Um, between this and then so you had you know then there was like I think there was you know a lot of third party sites out there that were asking for Google reviews and getting customers to opt in to allow them to create a Google account for them because you had to have a Google account and then Google smacked that down too and then um, then you've got people you know dealers had like a bunch of iPads in the store and people were there passing them out to customers to write a review before they left and then uh, you know, I think Google saw there's too much, too many of you know reviews coming in from the same IP address maybe or um, you know I'm not I'm not going to say I, I know exactly what they were doing or you know what their thought process was but they, like more reviews just kept disappearing. So um, the reason I say Google reviews is because Google um, is who we're catering to with our search. It's who we're optimizing our websites for. It's um, you know Google places page and those listings to strengthen those, you know, you get more reviews and they're good reviews, you know, not a couple words like service was great, but like you have, and I think you'll, you'd find that a lot of your customers that write the review actually write like a paragraph or more. Um, and what that does with Google is, is, you know, it gives you more clout with your places listing. You know, the more clout you have with your places listing, the higher listing fits. And so, you know, it'd be great if you could, for a search result, have your dealer uh, places listing and then also an organic search result be there. Um, you know, and then if you do paid search, you have a paid search result see right there. You have like three um, three positions on page one. It's fantastic. And so that's why, you know, I, I think, you know, it's good to get reviews anyway at all. But I, you know, if I, if, if, you know, definitely I would prefer Google reviews over any others just because that helps um, support our efforts with, uh, with our places. With SEO, with, right. So, yeah, right. with our SEO. So long, long-winded answer, I suppose. There, I apologize, but yeah, I, I believe it is Google. You know, they're who I think we should all cater to. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad idea, obviously, to get reviews um, from other through other sources. But and then the you know, address nine percent that says it's surveyed enough. You know, that I so I can see that too. You know, you've got the the problem is is you know those OEM surveys that go out you know within twelve hours or whatever. Um, those benefit the store. They benefit, you know, like how how well your store is doing, and the OEM can follow follow that. But you know, other consumers can't see those surveys. And I know that the consumers are getting surveyed a lot. But you know, if, you know, if it's at, if it's you know, be moving on to the next thing here, you know. So well, I was uh, I was going to say the nine percent of people who think that their customers are getting surveyed enough. I totally understand, but you probably will not find more uh, reliable proponents of your dealership than the people who constantly come back and use your service department. Your service department oh, yeah. has, has customers who will only go to them. They have a guy that they like to deal with, and they always go to them. They trust that guy. Those are definitely the people you should be hitting up for reviews. And oh, I'm, yeah. I mean, service <laughs> I'm sure your fixed ops people would agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. See, everyone would agree with that. The service department, you know, that you've, you know, good relationship between service and, and sales. You know, service sells the second vehicle. You know, customers, you know, 
customer buys a vehicle, gets it serviced several times in the course of, like, say, six months. The spouse has had a chance to drive the vehicle several times. Then they sit there going, well, my car is getting kind of old. I think I need a new one. And then you have, you know, they're sitting there in the service department getting a service, and they go, you know what, I'm going to test drive another one. And, and then, you know, service does sell the second vehicle. I've heard that over and over and over. So, um, but where, you know, what, you know, the issue here is, you know, asking for another review, and this is asking the customer to go the extra mile. The reason I think, you know, when you say customers are surveyed enough, this, this, I'm just going to touch on this really quick. 99, and I bet I venture to say, and I say that a lot, but I venture to say that 99% of your customers are happy, and the, it's the happy people that just drive home in their car and they show it to their neighbor, or they show it to their family members, and they're just happy. They don't do anything that they don't go to Google and write a review, and some of them do, um, but like let's just say that the majority of them just they're just happy. That's it. They go home and they're happy. It's the unhappy customers, and let's just say they're. 1% or you know, most likely or even less than 1% of the customers out there have a bad experience and it's a stronger emotion and they want to, they want, you know, rather, you know, they want, you know, correction taken um, to, to heal their pain. So what they do to, you know, kind of take a jab is they'll go, you know, tell everybody about their bad experience. And so those are the people who are very motivated to write the bad reviews. Um, so, you know, asking for the Google review to everyone who walks in the door um, is is a good way to you know. And then there's there's also people who write bad reviews, um, but people are smart. Other consumers that are reading reviews to see what your dealership is like, they can read a review and get a feel for that customer that had the bad experience. Was it was there was were they were their expectations out of line? And people get it. You know, it's just, you know I've heard one one. Uh, it was a Lexus store. Customer drove home in their new car. Uh, when they got home, the car, the dog jumped up on the side of the car, and the nails, the dog's nails, scratched the car. They took the car back to the dealership, and expected the dealership to fix the paint on the car that their their own dog had scratched. <laughs> and they fully believed that they were in the right with it. And and so like people would see that review and go, that person's unreasonable. That review doesn't, you know, that doesn't hurt you. Um, you know, and then also I'd say, you know, and I'll fix these other things in a moment here, but, you know, uh, having one or two um, re reviews that, while they should all be reached out to to try to correct the issue and get them to redo their review or update their review, um, at, you know, having a few bad reviews, it actually makes your, <laughs> uh, makes you appear more authentic or your other reviews more authentic to future customers because they see, you know, these guys aren't just, like, toting their plus page or placing page with, Good reviews only. You know they have a few in here, and those are reasonable things. But if you respond to reviews and 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 and, and Google lets you do that, um, I'd say some of the time I think there's, I've had others that say that their their responses didn't show up. But you know you had a valid correction for the customer that they simply didn't take, and so the review stood as it was. But seeing the, that the general manager or whoever was in charge of writing the um, following up on that review, uh, you know, wrote something in regard to it um, that actually diffuses that bad review by the fact you reached out and shows that you made an effort. Um, but you know, uh, you know, when I said back before, you know, there's the iPads handed out to customers writing reviews. That, you know, Google, you know, there's there's actually there's still a way for consumers to write a Google review from their their mobile phone, and they're not on your network. They don't have to be. They could be on their 3G or 4G network and write a review from their phone while they're in the store. So what I've done for my store is to create um, stands in the dealership. And these are located everywhere. Customers frequent their store, and it's the showroom, the service area, sitting there waiting to take delivery of their vehicle. They get asked to write a review, scan the QR code, and you know QR codes are old, and I get that, but they still work. And uh, this this uh, this this app, this way that they can write the review still works uh, until Google changes it, maybe. But um, you know, you can still get reviews while they're in the store with their phone um, if they have a QR code scanner, and that's what I use. Um, but there's other ways you can you can get them to do that. But you, know, you get you're a lot more likely to get them to write that review while they're sitting there than asking them to go home. But this is where you know, and you ask them, to, and they do go home. It's important to tell them exactly where they can find your site. You know, some, maybe your plus page doesn't, your places page doesn't show up 
on a search result for your dealership uh, search. So they're sitting there going, where where do I write this review for your, on your Google? You ask for a Google review. Where do I do that? Well, a good way is to create a page on your website, maybe under About Us, that says you know Google reviews or, or reviews, and you create a page with with links that go to your review site, so that you can tell the customer that rather than have them search for the review site on Google, you can simply just have them go to your website when they get home and go to your About Us page and look for your review page and then they link directly out to it. And then they have to log into Google, obviously have to follow all of those things in order to write the review. But making it easier for them in every way that you can, get them to go do that is a, is a key and, and a huge huge push on every store is just reviews and and because you know it's like Mr. Customer I understand that you're you know you're going to get a bunch of you know surveys you're going to get surveys um, but this type of survey if you write a Google review for it that actually lets the world know about your experience with us the other surveys are just for in-house and that's what we use to monitor our own service to you but you know the rest of the public doesn't see that. So if you wouldn't mind writing a Google review for us, it would be most appreciative. So that's that's where I go with uh, Google reviews. Um, I guess we can oh, we can move on here um, to uh, putting yourself out there. Um, and this is being listed on major online directories. And so um, this is you know this, you know if you're careful how you do it, it is only it could it could just only benefit you. Um, you know from reputable directories provide more relevant quality inbound links. Um, reputable one-way links provide positive link popularity, which can improve your search ranking. Um, but there's a caution. And and I'm not sure, maybe you were aware of this, maybe you weren't. But um, you know, all, your reputable online directories can help you, but link farms and link schemes will most definitely hurt you. Um, and this is old news, but way back people, you could go on and, and you know, go into like you know, a local, you know, like let's say Craigslist, and there's people out there say, you know, here's 5,000 links to your website, inbound links to your website for $60, and you can buy all these links. Well, you know, you know, Web Pro News followed up on a story that the New York Times did on the Black Hat link scheme that J.C. Penney's constructed in 2011. Maybe you were aware of this, maybe not, but took this right out of their uh, Web Pro News. There's the link there. But according to the, the article, Jay Spinney dropped uh, from an average search result position of 1.3 on February 1st to an average position of 52. So they're on page five now, you know, on, on Febu as, uh, February 10th, so nine days later. Um, Google did not remove them from the search index, but with an average search result, obviously, of 52. They're not, you know, with nobody going to page two, much less page five, they might as well take them off the index. Um, and this is a this is a tweet by uh, Matt Cutts. You know, it says he left a comment. I really wish that our algorithms or other processes had caught this much sooner. I'm definitely not celebrating. But what this was in response to was Stacey Penning's had uh, put together a link scheme. They had uh, irrelevant websites inbound linking to to their to their their main site. Um, and with that link scheme, when it had snuck by Google with their Black Hat strategy, uh, it created this, um, you know, this extremely great presence for them for a short period of time until it, they were found out. Um, but you know, the, the problem, you know, that the expense to not being page one for them, you know, and I believe that Google Search uh, page one real estate is like probably the most valuable real estate on earth, <laughs> in, in a sense, as far as the success of your store goes. Um, and to to jeopardize that with bad links is it was a big fault of them. They had to spend a lot of money to go out to those. I don't even know how many thousands of websites that were inappropriate, maybe or um, definitely not relevant, um, or you know, definitely a link scheme type thing. That they had to go contact each website um, uh, webmaster and ask for the link to be removed to J.C. Penney's. And the link, you know, webmaster would say, sure. Or remove the link for a dollar fifty or for four bucks or whatever. So you take that times you know thousands and thousands of websites out there that they had links out on. That cost them a lot of money, and you know that wasn't even the most. They they dropping the you know position of fifty two cost them a lot of money. So um, you know some some respectable um, directories to create listings on. You know here's a list. You know 
you know, D Moses is a, it's, it's, it's a, this is the, D Moses is the world's largest online directory. It takes a long time. You got to keep following up, making sure that, uh, uh, you know, check back weekly to see if your, your listing was added. If, yeah, if it's been like three weeks and it hasn't been added, you know, you can wait a little bit longer or go through the process again. But um, the ducks in a row, you know, Google is, you know, your places, pages is, is a, is a directory listing. Um, Yahoo has it, Look Smart, Deal, Go Guides, Escape, and then there's many others. But um, these are some, some good ones to have uh, listings on. And, you know, they, they help you if you do it with, you know, it's a, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a directory listing, not just a link in from an, another website that doesn't have anything to do with what you sell. So, um, you know, in summary, you know, we look at where we are right now. We, you know, strengthen the foundation of your dealer website. You're like building a house. You got to have an adequate foundation for the house you want to build. Um, you know, for so for the future plans of the store, you've got to make sure the website's strong the way it is now before you do that. Um, commit to creating unique, relevant content regularly to ensure that your website offers the customer more than your competitors does. Um, you know, that's that's one way we can get. You know, if Google's looking to you and you're doing it regularly, they can. Maybe I, you know, I, I've read about this, but I believe it exists. You know, there's like a, maybe a hot index, you know, where they like, hey, this content, they, we can expect content from this, um, this store, this website, on a weekly basis, so we can check back more frequently to this website, more crawl up more week frequently to see if they've added new content because they've been adding good content so far. Um, and then participate in all things Google. Um, we talked about a few things. There's a lot of things you can do with Google. Um, just covered some of the major ones I thought were important. Um, and then ask for the Google review. Um, and you know, I guess any review, but I, I prefer Google just because it, it helps with the, your overall strategy um, of who we're trying to please, which is Google. Uh, and then you know, create listings on reputable online directories for your dealer website. And so, yeah, so I, I, that's, that's what I have. That's my presentation. I thank you very much for your time today. You know, just uh, God bless you and our great country great country we live in. We, we have these opportunities. So. You're right. Go America. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. Okay, audience, now's the time. If you haven't sent in your question yet, well, what are you waiting for? We have some great questions from the audience already in the queue, but if you want to get your question in, now's a great time to send it in. Now, before we get to those questions, we do have a little bit of business to take care of, don't we? John. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> Sorry, I missed my cue there. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We got a couple of uh, prizes out there. It's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends at Customer Scout Inc. are giving away two amazing prizes today on the webinar. And we're going to give one away right now. First, one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win an HD GoPro Hero 3 digital camera. Boom! This amazing prize is valued at two hundred dollars. Where are you? Where'd you go? <laughs> Just not quite sure. I, I clicked on your question and answer, and it's actually a link there. Yeah, don't do that. Go to the next slide. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, audience, what you had to do is you had to be paying attention, and. Some people are already writing in the answer, but your answer is wrong, Bruce. <laughs> All right, you had to be paying attention for when uh, he said this very important thing. So hopefully one of you was paying attention. You're going to be the first one to write in. It's going to win this awesome prize. So saunter up to your keyboards. It's a simple question about the presentation. First one to write in the correct response will be walking away with an HD GoPro digital camera. I'm so jealous. So get to your keyboards, get ready, and good luck, everyone. Okay, here's the question. According to eMarketer, what percentage of users never go to page two of search engine results? And we have a winner. All right. Congratulations. Wow, a lot of people answered this one, right? Some of you didn't get it right either, but the correct answer was 80%. And the very first person who wrote that in 
is Madeline Cave. Madeline Cave, congratulations, and write your name down. You are today's winner. You are winning a GoPro digital camera, and I am so jealous. Hold on, I'm writing down your name. Madeline, if you could please write on in, give me your mailing address, and also tell me what dealership you're from so we can give you a proper congratulations. Now, Madeline, since you're already a winner today, you can sit this next question out because you are already a winner. She is with Burlington Subaru Hyundai. Congratulations, Madeline. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit jealous right now. But don't worry, audience, you have one more chance to win. Isn't that right, Sean? Yes. Yes, yes go, to, Sorry. go to the next yes. slide because guess what? You guys also have a chance to win an Apple iPad Air 16 gigabyte is valued at $500. Yes, and so let's get to it, audience. Again, you had to be paying attention to win this one. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. According to SEO Moz, what percentage of all Google searches are long-tailed keyword searches? Let's see, do we have somebody who won this? Why, yes, we do. We have a winner. Audience, thank you so much. Let's see, the very first person who had the correct response of 70% is, and I love the name, Diva Ross. I can't even believe that's your real name. If that's your real name, dude, I got to meet you. Okay, Diva Ross, you are our winner today. <laughs> Diva wrote in, it's her real name. That is awesome. Diva, please write in your... Uh, Diva Diane Ross, that's what I was thinking. Okay, <laughs> please write in what dealership you're from so I can give you a proper congratulations. And also, please, if you wouldn't mind, write in your mailing address as well. And Madeline, you too, I didn't get your mailing address. Uh, let's see, Madeline is from Vermont, Diva is from Texas, and Diva is from Demontrand. Auto Group. I hope I said that right. I probably didn't, but it's okay. De Montron Auto Group. Diva Ross, you are our winner today, as well as Madeline. Big winners today. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you, audience, for playing along. And of course, we want to thank Customer Scout Inc. for their incredible generosity. This was a lot of fun. I love this. I wish I had some background music. One of my favorite parts. Okay. Yeah, great prizes. Absolutely agreed. Okay. Audience, now's the time we go and we grill our presenter. It's stump the presenter time. You ready, Sean? <laughs> yeah. All right. Your first question comes to you from Nathan. Nathan says, do search engines still find meta keywords relevant or are they now just spam? This is not the first time I've heard this before. There's a nasty rumor going out. That's, you know, people are saying that meta keywords don't hold as much weight or even any weight that they used to in the earlier days of Google. So, Sean, what does your research show? Are meta keywords, I mean, should we still be concerned? Um, so, you know, as far as Google's concerned, Google, um, you know, the, the, the point here is to, um, you know, the reason they stopped, I believe they stopped giving any clout to the keyword uh, meta tag was in regard to people, you know, stuffing in tons of keywords that weren't on the page uh, that, the, that the customer was was going to then view. And Google would view the page and say, okay, well, you have so many keywords here that aren't even listed on this page. Um, I, we still employ keyword strategy uh, or, you know, input key, keywords and the reason is, is we don't know what Google is going to do in the future. If people get back into, if Google begins to see that people are only putting the relevant keywords in that field um, for the page, then then maybe they will give it more clout in the future. So we still put them in, but you know, instead of putting in a hundred keywords like I, I just, we've all seen in the past that were stuffed in there, um, you know, we only just put in the relevant ones that are actually located on the page somewhere that we're actually talking about. So, uh, no, I don't believe Google right now utilizes, you know, doesn't really give any clout to that. Um, but we don't know what they're going to do in the future. And then also the, the other search engines that still use, or, you know, that still, you know, look at the keyword and, and give uh, search rank, you know, they, they still, still use, it, use it in weighting um, the value of that page. So. Um, I, I think it's still something to 
to input when you're building a page. It doesn't take that much more time to put in the relevant keywords that are located on the page. But yeah, it's it's not something you know currently that Google is looking at or giving much weight to. But we still do it. <laughs> we still because do we it. Yeah. Let's hedge our bets because you never know. I mean, 500 changes to Google each year. That's more than one a day. That's crazy. How can anyone keep up? You have, that's a full-time job, just keeping up with that. Nathan, oh, yeah. thank it you is. so much for the great question. Okay, next question. It's actually a bunch of questions that came to us from a couple different people. So I want to make sure we address this. It's all about video. So Joe wrote in, will utilizing video help search results on Google as it pertains to placement? And then David wrote in, is video content better than just print content? I mean, if I have unique video content, should I have it transcribed to get better SEO in general? So kind of the same thing. One wants to know if video is better for placement on a SERP, and the other one wants to know, well, okay, if I have great video, should I have it transcribed, or is it's better than print content and I shouldn't worry about it? Well, yeah, video is making... You know, obviously, Google thought highly of video as they purchased YouTube, and there, you know, you see a lot of YouTube um, uh, search rankings. And so, uh, what we find is um, our research has found is, you know, r real estate on page one is is the most important thing, as, and that not very many people go to page two. Um, the way we utilize videos is, you know, having videos. It, it, I, I would say text is. Text content is king still um, for a consumer to actually click on the results and get what they're looking for. Um, but video content is, is very important in regard to pushing down your competition. You know, you have great videos out there that rank highly for search results. Um, then th what you've just done is you may have an organic link to your site, um, and then you have your YouTube videos ranking as well. What that does is just give you more you own more of page one, and so that's why we have an emphasis on videos uh, is, is because of that. Um, but then also video itself is, and there's, I have a, a friend of mine who uh, does uh, uh, closed captioning, um, and what they're, the, 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 what they're coming up with is, is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. They're going to be able to um, include and it's I believe they, he called it is the micro data of the video will based on a, it will have a text it will allow Google to see the video versus just like the optimized portion the text portion that you put in yourself but actually having um, inlaid in the video in the code of the video um, points in the video where you're actually talking or where the video is actually referring to the keyword that the consumer um, is just searched for. And so the, the new technology is going to be jumping ahead in the video uh, to that spot in the video that the search um, is relevant for. And so that's, that's, it, it has, it's, not, it's not out to the masses yet, but that's the kind of stuff that's going to come. It's like better video optimization, like you know, the facial recognition, the, 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 the recognition in the code. Um, to specifically place content in the code of the video um, to identify uh, the, the, the phrases, the, what, the meat and potatoes of what the video is about. Um, so yeah, video is, is very important. Um, when you look at maybe you have a, a video search result um, and you actually click on it to see how many views it's got, there's not that many. But the, 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 what you've just done by even having that video page one is you've just gathered up more page one real estate. So videos are very important. The, the text content on your site, that what's going to give the customer something to dive deeper into, I believe, is, is paramount. The videos are very important because they gather more page one placement and push your competitors to page two, which we know not many people go to page two. So it's in your, you know, to your advantage to optimize your videos so that you can be relevant for the search and and you know you've got a lot of the listings on page one you're the most relevant guy for the search gal for the search so you know hopefully you win that clip so yeah it's, I'd say it's equally important to uh, to do that you know definitely updating the content of the site is more important because that's your website is, is your digital dealership but 
the videos that you you put on um, and optimize for it, you know, that's that's kind of the future. That's there's, there's a lot of great things that are coming out for video. Excellent. Thank a you. Long-winded so answers. Apologize. Yes, yeah. we need to keep those answers a little shorter if we can, because we got some more questions to get to, and we we're running. We're definitely over time. Okay. Okay. So, Let's let's uh, thank you, Joe and David, for those great questions. Let's get to this next question. Actually, same question was sent in by two different people. So Larry wrote in, "I've been consulted that you need to use the same phone number for all things Google, or you will be blacklisted." Please advise. Bruce wrote in, "You stated that we should use a call tracking number on our places page." Shouldn't that number, as well as all citation-related numbers, be the same as the number on your main site? Sean, so what do we tell Larry and Bruce and others like them who have heard conflicting rumors about what to do, which kind of phone number to have? So I've heard more about uh, Google identifying a 100 number call tracking number and then giving, you know, and identifying that on the page as less relevant. Having a single number, you know, the reason we use call tracking numbers to, is to identify um, where the source of the call originated from. Um, I haven't heard of anyone getting blacklisted for utilizing different call tracking numbers on different on different Google um, um, tools, let's say. Um, but yeah, if, if you're fine with saying, okay, this is my this is my phone number. That I mean, it, it, you know, if it makes it more streamlined and, and Google identifies a single number. I would I would say I agree that it's better to use one, but you do that. You know, there the, the individuals that want to know every every call and they're looking at this every month to see where their calls are coming from. Um, having a local call tracking number um, on on those tools is is not. I I haven't seen anything where it's anyone that actually reports that they're getting blacklisted for it. So, um, and, you know, whereas, and I just want to say this too, you know, as I, as I you know, thousands and thousands of hours invested into um, helping dealers create their online presence and, and utilizing these tools to do so, um, I haven't had any of them report any negative effects of doing these things. I don't want to say that I am the all end all expert in regard to this. Reason being is it's a you know, it's a moving target with 500 updates every year. They can change it at any time. There's you know so it's 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 you know it's kind of like a practice like the medical profession. You know you it's medical it's, it's that's what they call it a practice versus a science is because they try different things. So. But yeah, and hopefully that was uh, you know not so long-winded. But I don't I think a, a local call tracking number is going to hurt you. No, as a matter of fact, local call tracking is what uh, Google recommends. And um, if anyone cares to go and check it out, we actually did a webinar with a few guys from Google, and uh, they talked specifically about Google local pages. And it was last year, and it was with Peter Lido. And all you have to do is go to dealeron.com/webinar and go click on the right hand side for on-demand webinars and look for a webinar from I believe it was last August and with Peter Lido and it's called the Google Plus webinar and half of it was about Google Plus and the other half was all about Google local Google places and in there they do address uh, phone numbers yeah it wasn't it was last August so if you have any other questions about that that is a fantastic resource for you as well okay Next question, by the way, thank you both Larry and Bruce for a great question. Next question comes to us from Andrew. I love seeing your name come up on my screen, Andrew. Okay, Andrew wants to know if you, Sean, could give us a quick tutorial on the rel author tag. Okay, um, so, you know, for uh, create, creating your Google authorship, um, you know, wanting to do this from, you know, you have your, your you have your, Plus page, and then you have your and there's there's also tutorials, and I can um, give you maybe a, a, an actual slide share presentation in regard to this. But you have uh, the, the person at the store, and that's why before when I said dealer principal, you know names on the building, that's who writes all the checks. That's the person's face who needs to be, um, I in my opinion, the one who needs to be related to the Google authorship. 
Um, so the content that you're creating on your site, the content you're creating on your plus page, um, you, you're creating a, you know, making sure that the dealer principal has a Gmail account themselves, and then create their plus page, and ask, and then adding the rel equals author tag on the website content that then references, you know, and then you can, and then you go to the 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 their plus page and 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 put the websites that they're actually contributing to to complete the circle, and then this all you know, and then your plus page for your website um, is linked to your website. Um, so that's that's what completes the circle for Google authorship. And the more content that um, you know, Google has had a bunch of changes with authorship and awarding. Um, you know the different types of displays that that show up in search results, whether your face shows up or just your name um, or nothing at all. Um, and so what they're looking at is to create more importance on Google authorship in regard to uh, the content that you that you've published in your name. Is it relevant to the site that you're you're public? You know that you've you've become the author on. So if we're in the automotive vertical. And the dealer principal and the content that's being written is, is in line with automotive as it's the, it's the dealer website. Then the more content that they write that you can link them to is going to give them more um, authorship, um, more authorship uh, authority. So the more of that that you can create, um, and there's websites out there that you can check your authorship authority and things. Um, but that's uh, hopefully that answered the question, Andrew. Um, Andrew actually had a follow-up question too. He says, "Where do you place the tag on the content so that Google will see it?" So, um, you know, there's you, not the about us page, you know, not the home page as, as, as what I'm what I what we've read, but more so like the specific content. Maybe like you have an on-site blog um, on your dealer website, or you're creating your own on-site blog on your dealer website. Then that content is what you could include the relic with author uh, tag to, and since that's new content every month that you're posting to the site, Google sees that as actual author written content versus like the static standalone content that doesn't change but every several months, and not you know like say the homepage that doesn't change very often. So you want to put it on the the content that you know, the fresh content that you input on the site, and, and so an example of that would be. Um, and, and include the tag within like your on-site post. Does that, does that answer your question, Andrew? Uh, hopefully. Andrew, you let me know if you have another follow-up question, okay? All right, let's get to a few more because we're really over time and we really want to get to these questions as well. Um, next question comes from one of our winners today, uh, Diva. She says, that she missed where to submit new page content to Google. What was the URL? Is that something that you had earlier in your show? So there, you know, there's a lot of uh, places to do it. The one we do because we're catering to Google and it gets it on their index quicker, I believe, is just going to google.com forward slash add URL. Um, you need to be logged into your Gmail account to, to do this. Um, but you basically you take the, the URL of the page you've created, the published URL, and you and you and you place that in there, and then there's a captcha that you'll have to create, and that's to prevent uh, computers from doing that automatically for your site. So they want a human doing it, um, but that's where you go: google.com forward slash add URL. Thank you so much, Diva. I hope that helps you out. Okay, uh, next question comes to us from Josh. Josh says, and I got to tell you, I do not understand this question, so I'm just going to throw it out there. How will the new G TLD extensions impact SEO. I, I'm close. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and I don't pretend to know either. How will the new G TLD extensions impact SEO? So the answer to that is I don't know. I'm going to need to do research on that um, and get back to you. And I, I would be happy to provide the, my, my findings to everyone, but I don't know the answer. Ah, thank you so much for that. Okay, Josh? You win. You stumped the presenter. Bravo. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, he says woot woot. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, Josh. Um, um, he says uh, vanity websites 
from GoDaddy. I don't know what that means either. But um, uh, I'll tell you what, Josh, I'm going to give Sean your contact information after the show, and he's going to find out the right answer and get back to you. Right, Sean? That sounds good. That sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, next question comes to you from, let's see. Oh, he says thank you, by the way. <laughs> thank you, Josh. Okay. Uh, it's not really so much a question, it's more of a comment, last one actually, from Joe. He says um, about reviews, the challenge we face when asking for Google reviews is that clients who do not have a Gmail account do not, do not get one just to give us a review. So it's easier to use other sites where they don't need a Gmail account. Joe, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, I hear you too, and that is you know the concern. Any review is better than not, no review at all. So if they don't have a Gmail account, then then so you know some some people have one and they don't know it. Like if they have a Droid device, um, say they have a Droid phone, then they have a Gmail account. They just and it's always live on their phone. They can simply you know like I provide True. you with the, the QR code that works to be able to do that, but. And they or may not have one. But if they know for certain they don't, then yeah, any review is better than, than no review. But um, more and more people are getting Gmail accounts just to get get on with Google Plus. So um, hopefully, hopefully it's not a majority of your customers. Right. I mean, thank you. Uh, I I was going to say I have a Droid phone, and I always thought I was in the minority until I did the research. iPhone is actually in the minority, and more mm -hmm. people have Gmail accounts than you think have them. I mean, Droid is owned by Google, so that's why they work so well together. But um, uh, I think you'd be surprised at how many people do actually have a Gmail account. It might not be the one they use every day, but they definitely do have them. And I don't have an estimate, but I know that they're the majority. I know that Gmail account holders are the majority. Google rules the world, all right? But I will tell you this, audience, <laughs> just this morning, I booked um, I booked uh, Heather McKinnon from Dealer Raider um, to do a webinar specifically about reviews and how to get reviews and all that kind of stuff. She's a great speaker about uh, engagement and reviews and reputation management, and she's going to be talking to us in August, I believe August 14th. So uh, you might want to put that one on your date if you're interested to know how to get more reviews for your dealership, and I think it's going to be a great a great uh, presentation as well. I'll watch that one too. <laughs> I know, it's going to be good. Well, Sean, guess what? I, you're done and you're barely bruised or beaten. Let me tell you, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Fantastic, fantastic subject and uh, amazing presentation. We've already had people writing and saying it was one of the best webinars they've ever seen. So, Sean, thank you so no much way. for being here oh, today. Well, thank, you. thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Eliana, for putting this together. Um, and allowing me to present. So I appreciate everyone's uh, questions, and I will get back to you, Josh, on, on uh, the, as you said, their vanity websites and then also the, uh, the extension there. So I will yes. do my research and get back to you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Of course, I want to remind the audience, hey, guess what? I recorded this for you. I'm going to be sending you that link in just a few hours. i got to give me a little bit of time to get it up and online, right? So. Um, when you get the link, hey, feel free to share it with friends and colleagues, and today's webinar is going to be posted online within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars and click on the link on the right-hand side for on-demand webinars. And by the way, this webinar is going to conclude in just a moment, and when it does, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out, because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. Fill it out and let Sean know how he did today and what you thought of his presentation. We're going to be randomly selecting a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. You don't want to miss out on more chances to win, do you? Now, just so you know, Sean's going to forward this slide a couple of slides, and I'm going to let you know, invitations will be going out tomorrow for our very next webinar how to protect the privacy of your clients, your dealership, and yourself with none other than Kevin Fry. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you're prepared or not, guess what? A huge train wreck is impending in our market as modern technology and big data collide with our consumers' demand for privacy. If your company doesn't act accordingly, bad press and lawsuits are sure to follow.
After all, a consumer views a privacy breach, no matter how big or small, as a breach in trust, and once you've lost their trust, you will never get the sale. Do you know how to protect the privacy of your clients, your dealership, and yourself? In this eye-opening one-hour webinar, Kevin Fry is going to discuss creative and leading approaches on how to use transparency to successfully administer the proper privacy settings on your retargeting, your website tracking, your social media strategies, your CRM, and more. You're also going to be surprised to learn how much your behavior is being tracked by retailers and our government. <laughs> so we'll also show you how to best protect your privacy online with your smartphone and with your social media. So if you want to find out how to make the right moves with regards to privacy, this is one webinar you can't afford to miss. Let me tell you, I saw him present this subject at the recent digital dealer. It freaked me the heck out. I cannot believe how much of our information is out there. You're going to want to see this, I promise you. So don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and 9 a.m. Pacific Time. And we have some amazing subjects planned for this year. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, I'm your girl. Please feel free to contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. I love hearing from you. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and all the automotive social networks. So track me down online or email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Take care and have a good one.